All right, everyone. So you should have traced over your pencil lines with crayon lines. So this will tell people what color you're actually going to be using in your painting. So with Vincent, you guys can see I did something in the background. I did a texture rubbing like we did on our last self-portrait. Um, would we call this a self-portrait? No, this is a portrait of another person. So it's just a portrait. So I'm actually going to add some texture to the background on Frida. Now I don't want to hide her. So we mentioned this before. I want to use a color that's going to contrast with other colors. She's not really wearing any blue, and I'm not going to paint her skin blue. So I actually have this mat from our kitchen, and I'm going to take this because it has a lot of nice texture to it. I'm going to put this underneath the paper, and I don't want to do this on her face. What I want to do is just do that rubbing so that I actually print onto the space around her. So you can see where a lot of the bumpy texture is sticking up. It actually gives me texture around her and prints a pattern in the background. So I want to go to this side. So I'm kind of trying to control the crayon so I make sure I don't overlap it on her. And what's it's okay to do? Some people want to like this. I'm going to actually break this in half to make it smaller, more manageable. That way I can fit into some of those tighter spots. Oh, look, I broke the crayon, but it still works. I'm not going to stop and get upset about that. Now I'm ready to move on to painting. So for painting, you want to do a resist technique where you don't let the crayon lines get covered up with the paint. So you definitely want to use a water-based paint. So we've talked about this before. If we use watercolors, um, we can use a water-based paint. We know we can control the lightness and darkness of the colors. So I'm getting my brush ready. I'm tapping it out, but since I'm using watercolors, I'm not going to squeeze out the extra water. I'm running it over the edge of the bucket two times. So I'm loading my brush with some brown paint. So I'm starting to paint her skin. So that looks like I go, oh, that might be too dark. So what I would do is clean out my brush, run it over the edge, and I'm going to spread around what's there so I can control the lightness and darkness of the color. So if I want it darker, more paint. If I want it lighter, I would add a little bit more water. The nice thing about certain things, I don't have to sit there and paint around the line for her nose or her eyebrows because those were done in crayons, so I can actually see them really well. They resist the water that's in the paint. I'm going to go around her mouth. I noticed Frida Kahlo, she would wear a little bit of lipstick when she went out. So I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to paint that red later. So what I would be doing is painting things like her ear is brown, so I'm going to use the brown paint to actually paint it. Now, hmm, so her hair is black, so I'm going to use black paint to fill that in. Now, you'll notice when I trace it with crayon, you guys can probably still see the pencil line there for the shape of her head, but her hair is covering that up, so I didn't trace that because I don't want to be able to see that later. That could go a little darker, so I'm adding a little bit more paint to it. There we go. And I want to make sure I don't cover up the flower, I don't cover up the headband. Those are going to need to be different colors. I trace them with different colors, so my plan is to use different colors to actually paint them. So I'm going to go all the way down to where her hair touches her head there. So then this is part of her hair. I trace it with black, so that should be painted black. So I'm not done with Frida, but I feel like I'm ignoring Vincent. So I'm going to grab him and pull him back down here. So with Vincent... I would be doing some of the same things. I think for his skin, I'm going to use orange. If I put on too much at first, I can always lighten it up by adding... Oh, that looks like he's got a bad sunburn. I'm going to get rid of that paint in my brush, and I'm going to spread around what's there. I could go a little bit more, so spreading it around. So more water does lighten it up. So I don't have to paint around his nose. That's going to be the same color. You can paint right over his eyebrows. That's the same color. So his shirt, you guys will notice I've traced it with blue. So I plan on using blue for his shirt. That could go a little darker, I think. So I'm adding more paint. Yes, that did darken it up. And his hair is not really showing, so I need to make sure I made that stand out. Rinse and had pretty bright red hair. So what I might do is start with a little bit of brown on top, 
and then go back in. That's letting those orange lines that I trace show through. So that's helping it look like he does have his red hair. But if I need to, I can always go back in and change the color by mixing it. But would we mix it in the paint set? Or would we mix it on the paper? I hope you said paper. So I'm going to get a little bit of red on my brush and I'm going to go in a little bit more than that. That's not showing up. And I'm going to go in and mix that into that brown to give him that redheaded look. All right, so I'm working on Vincent. I'm working on Frida. So you guys have chosen one to start with, but what I think you should do is when you're finished, because I'm going to keep working on her, when you're finished, I want you to do the artist that you didn't already paint. So if you're painting Frida now, I want you to give Vincent Van Gogh a try. If you're painting Vincent Van Gogh, you'll give Frida a try when you're done. All right, good luck, guys.